The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, and welcome back to this next installment in the Blueback How-To series of videos. My name is King Benelak, and today I will be taking you through uh, today's workflow entitled A Highlights Reel of the Blueback Toolbox, Five Tools That Can Change Your Life. Uh, a few words before we get started. Um, thanks for signing up. Um, we will be running these sessions over the next three weeks. We've already, this is actually the close of our second week. Um, so please sign up to the next ones. You should have a link in your mailbox. Um, please tell us what you would like to see. Um, we're always looking for new content. So if you have any good ideas, it'd be good to get them. We can always add them if you want them as well. If you want to find out more, please contact your Seagal account manager or email sales at seagal.com. A few words on the format. Each of these sessions last between 20 and 30 minutes. Today's might take up the full 30 minutes. Each session will be recorded and you will get a copy of the recording via email 24 hours after the webinar ends. The recording will also be loaded to the uh, Seagal YouTube channel. So pop onto YouTube, just type in Seagal and uh, you'll see it pop up there. If there is time for a Q&A, please can you submit your questions via the chat tab in the GoToWebinar console that should be showing on your screen right now. So a little summary of today's situation. Um, so a hypothetical oil company, Isolation Oil, are looking at a potential uh, redevelopment opportunity, a slow cost in this low oil environment. And they're looking at uh, redeveloping an abandoned asset uh, which last produced oil uh, in the 90s. So as part of this, they want to undertake a static geomodel study to refine the understanding of the reservoir structure um, and in place volumes. And they're going to be doing this using paper-based seismic shot some time ago and only a few wells. So a couple of the challenges and the corresponding solutions. We're going to be importing and interpreting some legacy seismic. For these, for this, we'll use the import export functionality in the toolbox and the interpretation tools. We'll also then QC and edit the well logs. For these, we'll be looking at the well data viewer, the well log editor, and the interactive facies generator. Once our hypothetical grid has been created, we would like to QC it. So we'll QC the newly created geomodel grid. And for this, we'll use a 3D grid QC tool. We'll then populate permeability into the, into the grid. And for that, we'll use the equation transformer tool, which is a tool that belongs to the um, Blueback investigator. And then finally, we will generate a saturation model. And for this, we'll be use the water, using the water saturation modeling tool. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It's going to hop out of here and straight into patrol. So before we get started, the toolboxes are accessible through the Blueback Marina interface in the ribbon. You can simply click on the Blueback toolbox. Um, the tools are listed by discipline. Um, so geophysics, geology, reservoir engineering, unconventional toolbox and project management toolbox. And within the software, there's a, comprom a fairly comprehensive help, uh, set of help documentation. Um, so please, whenever you get stuck in a tool, just dive into the help menu. It's fantastic and should help you through any issues you might have. Um, in fact, it's so comprehensive that there is, a, is even a help menu about the help menu. So to get started, the first thing we're going to be doing is importing our seismic data. In order to import the seismic data, we need to define what the 2D seismic geometry is going to be, the, lat, the horizontal geometry. And that's done by utilizing uh, polygons. So what we do is we create a polygon and then we load the data onto that polygon. We created these polygons uh, that you see on the screen here for the current survey, just by accessing the tool palette, looking for the seismic interpretation, uh, blue back toolbox, and I'll just open the seismic interpretation toolbox. Straight away, you can see the blue back polygon editor. You just click that guy. Make sure you create a new polygon. I'll do that for the purposes of this example. And then we just, in our screen, control, click, and click. And that defines a single line polygon. We can then open the attribute spreadsheet, uh, the spreadsheet of that polyline, and we have access to the vertices information, and we can adjust those according to the actual parameters within the 2D line surveys. Once we're happy with the way those are set, we highlight that object. We right click on the context menu and we import file. To 
to load the seismic, we're going to be using the import export functionality that comes in the toolbox. This functionality is built into the drop down menu of the import options that come into Patrol. Today, we're going to be focusing on the image file loaded as 2D seismic option. When you have the license of toolbox, these will automatically populate in this drop down list. So we'll select that option, we'll select the relevant paper based line that we'd like to load. And we click, click open immediately that's going to bring up a context box and stored within that context box um, are a set of numbers and so we're going to go ahead and just type in the top and bottom ranges of our data so for this we'll type in minus one three five four and for the bottom range we'll just type in two thousand uh, three hundred and fifty and we'll leave the settings as they are. Once that's done, it's gonna pop up the settings menu and you just go ahead and select the none option for the interpolation method. And I'll get into that in a second. Once we've done that, straight away, we access our seismic data folder, look for the imported images folder, and we can see our newly loaded seismic object appears. So we'll just open up a 3D window and populate that into the 3D window. And there's our seismic objects populated into the 3D window according to the correct geometries that we've defined. If I zoom into this and choose the picking tool and I click anywhere on this image, you can see the attribute information line in the bottom line updating. And you can see it updating with amplitude data, trace numbers, and sample numbers. That's because the process of importing the 2D image creates a set of traces and a set of samples based on the um, uh, DPR information that comes with the image. So it looks at the pixels and creates a set of traces. Each of those traces with all the corresponding samples are assigned pseudo amplitudes. And that means we can utilize this object in the interpretation panel. So if I just look at the results of what we're going to use in today's study, there's my full grid of 2D lines already populated. And I've just got some blueback rulers to show a bit of context. So if I open up an interpretation panel, straight away my 2D line appears. I can select which lines I want to interpret. For this line, I'll just play around here. I've prepared this window by dropping in a blue back minimap. You can do that through accessing uh, the seismic interpretation tools. Just click on that object and it'll appear in the window. And I've also created a blue back dip indicator um, in the same panel, uh, access through the same panel. I just choose that object, the dip indicator. You can switch around and you can access the settings of those objects within the interpretation window settings. Scroll to the objects and you can fiddle with them there. The mini map is fantastic. It's a little inset map and gives you a bit of context. The blue line you see there is the seismic line and the blue and red dots you see are these two faults that I've picked there. So now that we have our image available, we have the interpretation options. We can actually select seeded 2D tracking because we have amplitudes and samples and traces, we can actually utilize that. So I'll just create a new interpretation, we can start interpreting straight onto this image. It'll do its best job of doing any of the auto tracking, but ultimately you can build your interpretations and I've got a few example interpretations already set up there. Good, so once we've finished with that, we're gonna dive out of the 2D seismic option, we'll move on to the next part of our story, which is moving on to our well data review. We're just going to open up our panel here. We've got eight wells in the study that carry the, that cover the area of the 2D seismic. As part of the study, we want to have a look at these wells. We want to QC the data that's inside them, and if there's any edits to be made, we want to make those edits. So again, we dive straight into Marina go into the blue back toolbox and what we're going to search for in the search panel is the well data viewer and it pops up with unconventional toolbox so this object comes with unconventional toolbox license we open that guy up we've got two copies of that open and we can dive into the help menu the well data viewer allows the user to browse well data from one common interface and that's the handiness of the tool so straight away, we can go in and select the wells we want. We can select the parent level for the data, or we can just multi-select data and drop that in as well. Once we have the data in, 
we can start looking around. So we have a tool panel that runs along the top. You can interact with the data and then we have all of the data tabs available. So in the header information, we start looking into the world's header types. Straight away, I can see world G5 is labeled as proposed. We know that's not true. This well was drilled ages ago. So from the tool panel, we can just go ahead to change that to an abandoned oil and gas well, and that'll change the uh, well simple type. On top of that, I'm just going to edit some of the comments. I can multi-select all these objects, edit the comments. We'll type in here, well, data review. Click OK. And for each and every one of those objects, it's going to do a batch edit and update those comments belonging to those. Looking into the deviation tab, uh, we're just going to wait for this to load. It's quite a lot of deviation data. We can have a look at the deviation data in spreadsheet form. The TDR tab. We can have a look at all of the TDR data that belongs to each of these wells. If we click the highlight wells with check shots object option, straight away it's going to highlight whichever wells have check shot data. In this example, all of those wells have it. Uh, just dive back in there. We then have the option to actually look at the TDR relationships and we can filter on what columns we want to see. Well logs, we can jump into porosity and have a look at the porosity logs. I've been told as part of this that the data loading in G5, there was an error on the porosity log that actually needs, needs to be offset by 50 meters. So we'll head out and edit that shortly. And then we can get the global well logs tab. And what we can do is we can highlight one of the global well logs and then clicking the highlight wells or selected logs option. We see straight away that none of these objects have been assigned to the fascies template. We can move up to the fluvial fascies example highlight those and straight away we see well G4 doesn't have a fluvial fascies template associated with it. So we're going to have to create a fluvial fascies log for that well as well. We don't have any well tops or production data, so I won't get into those just yet. So we're now finished with our well data review. To edit our two action items, which is the porosity log and the fascies log, we're going to go into the well log editor first. And the well log editor belongs to a number of toolboxes. We just open that guy up. And straight away, it pops up. So the dive into the help again, the well log editor tool allows various operations to be formed to edit and update well log data. We have the actions panel. So this is where you perform your edits. And then we have a pre preview panel. So this is where you see your previews updating. Any of the actions we create will not be written to the actual target well logs until we click apply. So we've selected our well there already, and I've got the preferred log already selected. So the first thing that I can do is I'm going to do a quick bulk shift on my wells. There's a number of these options available. So I'll do a quick bulk shift. I'll shift that log by 50 meters, and then I'll apply that action. And that action updates in this list at the bottom, but also the preview updates. So the blue line is the newly shifted log, and the gray line is the old input log. If we wanted to perform another option, for example, cutting that data, we could set the top at 1850 option to cut above and apply that action. And what will happen is that'll cascade. So it'll apply the action on top of the already created bulk shift. And there we go. We could see the preview data uploading. We also have the option to press undo. We'll do it for the purposes of this demo. And then we can choose to create new overwrite. We'll just create a new porosity demo log. I won't click apply. I've already created this earlier on. So I'll just close this up and Go have a look at well G5. So well G5, before we made the bulk shift, we can see that the porosity log and the permeability log are kind of out of alignment there. We look at the after that, so the after result of doing applying the bulk shift, they're now, now nicely aligned. We can just tile these two objects up and straight away we can see the visual difference between G5 after and G5 before. So now we've completed the porosity log editing. We just want to also create the fascies log for well G4. Again, you type in interactive fascies generator, geology toolbox pops up and we choose the interactive fascies generator option. In the help menu, this is a tool for generating fascies logs based on well logs. The user can define cutoff classifications for each of the fascies types and the user can also QC the results before doing the actual log creation. So much like a well log editor, we have the actions panel and we have the preview panel. Any actions applied here, can be updated here. So what we'll do is we'll set up our preview panel first. Uh, we'll just go look into there. Well G4. The well logs we want to pop up in the cross plot are porosity versus permeability. 
and there all our data loads up straight away. Now we want to work with a new a already created template. So we go to our Fluvial Fasces template and all of our Fasces classes pop up. So we'll just quickly create these. So for the background Fasces, background floodplain Fasces, we're going to do well log porosity is less than 0 0.09. And then we're going to click this live update button over here and straight away we'll see those edits starting to update in the panels. The next one is Levy. For this, we're going to drop in two options. For the first option, we're going to select porosity is greater than 0 0.09. And for the second option, we're going to choose gamma, which is going to be greater than 60 APR. And then finally, you can see the update starting to appear in the preview tab. We'll drop in two options for the channel sands. And for the channel sands, we'll do, again, permeability is greater than 70 millidarcies. And finally, gamma is going to be less than 60 APR. And there we go, our well logs are already updated and our cross plots have already updated. So now we're going to just create a suffix here. We'll call this demo. We don't have to overwrite any logs and the target well is of course going to be well G4. Okay, so we can now apply this change and step out of the uh, panel. So we can just maximize that. So we can see that well G4 didn't have a fascist log associated when all the others did. We'll close up here, dive into well G4 itself, open up its logs, and straight away we can see fluvial fascist demo. We'll open up the settings, assign that to the fluvial fascist global log, and then we'll go ahead, switch off well G4, switch it back on just to refresh it. And there we see the fasces log updating. Right, so moving on to the next step in our story, we'll now assume that we've created our grid and we want to do a bit of grid QC. So we're going to open up Marina again, type in 3D grid QC, and straight away, the geology toolbox and the reservoir engineering toolbox pop up and the 3D grid QC interface opens up. Click on help. 3D Grid QC is an easy way of investigating the quality of your 3D model. It features a set of new geometrical mod modeling properties, all tied into an easy user interface. So we start by selecting the target model. Well, this is our paper-based grid, which has been created by the team. We then select the properties. For this, we're just going to use zones at this point, and then the characteristics that we want to generate. So if you click on any of these, you'll see a detailed description of what each of these is. So for instance, lateral concavity indicates whether a sole corner has a lateral angle above 180 degrees and corners of zero thickness counts the number of pillar corners with zero thickness. I'm going to choose to run them all. You choose your target folder destination, which is in the properties folder. You can also export to an output path. So that'll be something like an Excel spreadsheet and you can filter on segments, zones or subzones. I'll click OK to run that. I have already generated this. We're just going to open up the set of windows for this part of the story. So just open up a player. We just pop down the property player here and switch off the K layer filter. So we can see our zone model nicely created. And looking into the input panel, we open up our properties tab. And inside of the Blueback 3D QC panel, we've got all of our 3D QC properties created. So we've got cells with zero thickness as an example that I'll show you. And we've got cells with lateral concavity that I'll show you. So I'm just gonna uh, show you this example. Cells with, cells with lateral concavity, we can flip through this and we can see anywhere we see dark blue to purple cells. Uh, these are cells with zero thickness, uh, pillars with zero thickness and cells with lateral concavity. Anywhere we have horizontal faults, we're going to get cells with lateral concavity, which basically our cells cut at an angle. This is fantastic for showing things like overturned faults at high dipping, uh, overturned cells at high dipping areas. So we've got our QC models done. 
Now we're going to move into modeling some permeability in our grid. So what we're going to do is just change up the sets of windows again. So in the story, we just close the 3D grid QC and input tab. We've got a beautifully created porosity model. And what we want to do now is we want to model permeability into this grid as well. And we're going to do that on the basis of the relationship between porosity and permeability at those upscaled cell regions. And then we're going to create some functional relationships. And then we're going to model permeability to the grid using those functional relationships. So we're going to do this. We're going to create the functional relationships between porosity and permeability inside of a blueback investigation. Into this investigation, I've loaded all of my well data. I've also loaded a set of fluvial fasc uh, the fluvial fasces discrete logs, and I've colored my data by fluvial fasces. What I've then done is I've created for each and every fasces class, I've created a regression of porosity versus permeability in the cro cross plot um, to end up with a set of regressions that are fasces specific. Once I've got those, I can then navigate into Marina. Uh, so I'll just navigate yeah, into Marina in general. Type in here, um, equation transformer. Oh, sorry, we're in the toolbox. Uh, we just open Blueback Investigator option, type in equation transformer, investigator tools will pop up and the equation transformer object option comes open. This option is specific to the investigator. So if you have a license of the investigator, you'll have this tool available. The point of the tool is it can be used to create new patrol domain objects using blueback investigator equations. So any regression analysis you do investigator, you can then write that to any target object that you please. So we load up the investigation that we want. We then go ahead and specify the equation that we want to use. We've also it's also automatically loaded up our fluvial fasces log. We must filter and select the corresponding fasces class for the equation. We then drop in our data object. You can see that you can use pretty much any object that patrol produces. In this case we're using our models. And it picks up the relationships that we were modeling in that investigation straight away. So it's going to use porosity as an input model. It's going to then derive permeability utilizing the equation that we specified in the equation dropdown. What we then do is we take reuse. This is going to allow us to reuse the same target grid for each and every analysis. That means that once we've done modeling the background floodplain fasces, we can then change our equation to, for instance, levy sand and change the target fasces class. And the model will then update again, except this time it's going to reuse that same model so we can stepwise build up our grid until eventually it's populated with properties in its entirety. So what we'll do is we'll then open up, we'll click, click uh, run on that, open up a 3D window and head off and into our model properties tab. We now see K underscore Segal, and this is our permeability model that's been created using those equations. So using the player again, I can just filter through this entire grid. And you can see our fluvial fasci channel has been populated with permeability values. I've also just created and updated this previous to this session, um, a couple of geometric fasci properties. I created a distance from fluvial fasci object using Marina Toolbox as well. Um, and then I've convolved that with the permeability output just to give these fluvial channels a little bit more character. And what that's going to do is give it higher porosity values towards the channel axis, uh, permeability values towards the channel axis. So moving on in our story to the final step, once we've got our porosity and permeability model into our grid, we now want to create a saturation model, a water saturation model that is. So we're going to dive into, oh, we're going to dive into the toolbox again, and we're going to choose the water saturation modeling object straight away geology toolbox opens up and when we click on this object we're just going to go to the help menu the dedicated water saturation modeling process uses the industry standard j function methods 
uh, for determining water saturation in a 3D sense by using well log data um, as an input. So it uses the Leverett J function uh, routines. So we close this. The actual water saturation modeling tab is accessed through the property modeling ribbon. We open it up. So I've been doing some work in here previously and saved those in to save some time. So I'm just going to switch off those panels. So what we do is we select our geogrid. We then define the well log data, the data we want to use. In this case, we're going to use well log data. We have to populate porosity, permeability, and water saturation logs. So we go off and find those relevant logs. And then we select the wells that we want to use in the study. Once we've done that, we then create a J function object. So I'm just going to create a new one as an example. When you create these J function objects in the cross plot, you'll see an update will appear instantly. It's going to use all the available data in all of those logs. And what it's doing is it's creating this dimensionless J function out of the porosity, permeability, and the defined free water level. Once it's got that, it's relating that J function to the water saturation, which is also coming from a log. It then creates a logarithmic linear regression, and that defines the relationship between the J function and the water saturation at the well log resolution. What will then happen is when we go into the Make SW property tab, we want to utilize that J function object to define water saturation across your model grid. And it's then going to say, okay, give me a porosity, a permeability, and a free water level for the entire model. So not just upscale cells. I'll create the J function for that, for that entire model at every cell location. And then I will derive a water saturation at each of those locations, utilizing the relationship that you defined at the well bores. Nice and simple. And it does all of this automatically. So I've created four different J function objects here. And the reason I've got four is because you can actually create the objects based on different filters. So for the floodplain objects, I've filtered to just include floodplain fascies, levy, just levy fascies, channel sand, just channel sand, and so on and so forth. So I've got four different objects. You can then fiddle around with the reducible water saturation and the uh, maximum water saturation. So for each of these, I've got a slightly different one. For instance, uh, crevasse play, I've got 0 0.01 and 1. It then auto calculates the A and B coefficients, which define the shape of these models. Um, once you've finished with that and you've defined the properties that you want as your output, you just click apply and it's going to go off and generate those for you. And what that does is it creates a water saturation model. It's a very quick and very painless process and avoids you having to use the calculator for ages. So that's it for today. Guys, that's the end of the workflow. Um, we've created our water saturation model and that can be passed on for volumetrics use. So I was going to dive out of patrol and get this up. So finally, thanks for watching. We love your feedback, so let us know what you want to see. Uh, if you have any questions, send them to support.geocigal.com. And please don't forget to register for the next video um, on Monday entitled The Blueback Project Checker. My data is there, but where is it? It's going to be run by Paul Gabriel. Uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time for questions, so please submit them to the support.geocigal.com and we'll try to handle them from that channel. Thank you very much. Cheers for now.